week two. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you didn't get too overwhelmed. Well, you probably got pretty overwhelmed last week, and that's totally okay, because I promised that this week we'd reel it all the way back. This is going to be the most beginner of beginner 3DS Max tutorials I can conceive of. So um, the whole point of last week was I wanted to really give an overview of the entire thing so that as I do each little section, you can see it as part of the whole, so you know what it's working towards. So you can always reference back to that first video and see the whole thing through. Um, step one this is the most beginner step ever. The stress level zero shirt. This is, this is not, just, not just quality apparel, it is also a, a must for 3DS Max. Uh, to, I, I recommend wearing it, wear, get a couple colors, wear a whole variety of them, because as you're doing it, you're gonna have to constantly remind yourself to calm down, get your Google on, get your, get your tweet on, ask me some questions, and we're, we're gonna get through it, because this program is a lot of frustration and a lot of Googling, so be ready for that. It seems basic, but one of the most difficult things in 3D is actually always knowing what you're looking at, because at the end of the day, you have a 2D representation of, of a 3D thing. And so between the, you basically have to use hints from all, all of your different views and all your different tools, um, often even like wiggling things around to know exactly what you're looking at. And it seems basic at first, but once your scenes are complex, it's actually essential for your speed of use of the program to be able to quickly select things, quickly navigate, quickly know what you're looking at. And so let's, let's kick it off here. The, the basic functions of 3ds Max, we have the four viewports, and then on this upper right here, you see we have a panel of, um, it's, you have create, modify, hierarchy, you have these different tabs. It's for now, standard primitives, if you click box, let's create our first box. Click and drag it out there, lift it up to make your box. You can customize, like, edit, you know, like the little details here for size, that, you can pre-divide your box so it has more chunks. Let's create like a sphere next to it, you guys can see how it works. Now the sphere by default, it, 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 orig it goes from its origin, so let's move it up so that we have it on the, the same plane. To move objects in 3ds Max, we have three tools up here. We have move, rotate, and scale. Uh, hotkeys for those are W, uh, E, and R. So that you want to get used to that. And then you also have the hotkey right next to it. Q is for selecting objects. So if this is seeming incredibly b basic to you, congratulations. You're ahead, of, you're ahead of most people. But we have to strip it down to absolutely nothing so that, so that everyone can get, their, uh, can get their 3DS Max on. So hit W for move there. On the z-axis, move this up. Now notice in the, in the viewports how this is moving. In the left, you see it going up. In the front, you see it moving up. And in the top, you don't see it moving at all. That's because the, the top, front, and left are orthographic, which basically means, means if you were looking at it from an infinity distance away and just zoomed in on it, you see it with almost no perspective. So when moving up and down, you don't see it. In the perspective viewport, you actually have what's more, more accurate to your eye, an angle of view. And so you can see something as it, as it gets closer or farther away. Let's create a plane. So we have a little, uh, little plane from the sit on. You see little shadows there. All right, now navigation. As you see up here, you have this little view cube. Um, that's one way to navigate. You can click and you can rotate around. Uh, if you click the middle mouse button, you can, you can pan around. If you click and hold Alt while doing it, you can rotate around. If you hold Control and Alt while doing it, you can zoom in and out on something. And you notice the center point for what it's zooming in on is, is whatever selected. Cue to select the sphere, hold Alt. Now we're orbiting around the sphere. Now if I select the cube, I'm orbiting around the cube. Now a good hockey to know is if you hit Z, it zooms in on whatever is selected. And you see how it does that in every viewport. So now if I click the box, hit Z, boom, it's gonna pop into just that box. The sphere, boom, just that. It's really important to be able to, uh, to navigate smoothly. This is something that I didn't really do when I first started, which is like actually figure out exactly how to get around here because you're gonna wanna be able to be comfortable and be able to move around quickly. And you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be scared of your program. You don't wanna be feeling like, oh, I don't wanna click here, I don't wanna accidentally, oh, if I right click, this huge menu pops up. You wanna be comfortable with all the functions of it so you're not worried if, you, if your cat comes and walks across the keyboard that everything's screwed up. Let's do a basic, basic modify in here. So if you hit the modify panel, basically what this is, you have a drop down menu of all, of all these different modifiers. Um, over time, you'll learn what most of these do. Let's put a very basic one on one of these objects. Let's put on uh, edit poly. This applies into the stack, so think of you got your box as your basic, and then you've got to edit poly on top of there, and you kind of start building a stack of the, of the modifiers, much like putting effects on a layer in After Effects. Now on this object alone, we can select in the vertice mode, and I remember back when we put, uh, put the more subdivisions on there, you can see I already have, I've got vertices on here where it's nine sections, basically nine cubes divided into for each way. You have your move, you can move this in and out like that, you know. Um, select, uh, you can go by line, you can select faces, move that. In and out, all these things right now. I'm kind of breaking the geometry. You want to be careful how you do this, but we'll get to that later. Proper proper ways to do this stuff. Uh, selecting faces, you select that. Boom. Move that up. Move that down. 
So fiddle around with this stuff and just kind of get it, get a, get a, you know, get familiar with how it moves around. There's another fun one. Put Turbo Smooth after our uh, after our Edit Poly, and we have see how it rounds that box off. And basically, have iterations. Be careful. Don't just spam click these boxes. In 3ds Max in general, try not to spam click things because there's some things where it's exponentially more more computer intensive to get things going. If I if I spam click this number one right here. Right now, it will, it will literally, it won't crash 3ds Max. It might crash 3ds Max, but it will, it'll make it so it starts doing calculations to such infinite possibilities that it'll start, it'll, it'll start to chug. So you see one iteration, two iterations, three iterations, four iterations. It's, it's basically subdividing it and smoothing out this box. So we get a really, really nice uh, smooth box there. If you, if you go much higher than that, you'll overwhelm your computer really quickly. Let's go into uh, the most basic of animations. Most basic of animation is uh, using what's called auto key mode. So we have a position for this. And you see we have a timeline down here, 0 to 100 frames. Um, what we're going to do is click on Auto Key, go over to, say, uh, say 50 frames here, and move that box over. Now, while the, red, while the red's on, you see it's got the red warning on there. That means that anything you move is going to save that movement. So now look, if I scrub back and forth, now it's animating between those two things. Go forward again. Let's move it. Let's move it here. And now it's going to move a little bit. So you want to be careful with auto key on because basically whatever you do is kind of being recorded a different state of it. And when you're done with it, always remember, turned off. And I believe it's N. N is the hot key for toggling auto key on and off. So that's basically, that's the basics of creating objects. Uh, viewport navigation, I want you to fo focus on that. Um, doing a little bit of animation, doing a little bit of uh, putting some modifiers on there. Uh, you guys have homework this week. You're not getting off so easy. Um, go into your 3ds Max. Whatever version you have should have this. Help tutorials, and it'll pull up this window right here. It's the 3ds Max tutorials. If you don't have this by default, you can download them off the 3ds Max site. There's actually links to that right there. I want you guys to uh, go do the entire getting started animated battle scene. And basically, what this is, it's going to say, let's see here. It tells you it's going to take about one hour to complete. Uh, if you get, if you want to do it, do it twice. Figure it out. Play with it. Don't just any tutorial that we do. Don't just go through it as fast as you can. It's not a race. Don't just uh, don't just try to you know go click by click and get through it. Really learn what it's trying to teach you. What are the principles behind it? My Twitter is always open to you guys to, uh, to ask questions and stuff. There's a rule, though. With great power comes great responsibility. If I can ever just Google what you ask me and get the answer, you're cut off for life. It's, like, it's not efficient to, to tweet at me or go onto a forum and ask a question and wait for somebody to respond. Um, odds are someone's already asked your question. Someone's already had your problem. So piggyback on top of other people's problems, Google it, find their answers, and figure it out. Um, when you finish this tutorial, uh, take, a, uh, take a picture, either a screenshot or uh, take, a, take a cell phone picture of yourself in front of your screen. Tweet it at me. Let me know you finished. I'm hoping to get thousands of these responses. I expect to get thousands of these responses because you guys, it's summertime or summer's just about to start. Time to pick something up. You can actually this summer, if you, if you dedicate 10 hours a week or you start, it's a new hobby. If it's something you like doing, um, it's, it's a real trade. It's something that you actually could do professionally for money someday. And so it's, it's, this is a very valuable skill to pick up. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun, very rewarding creatively, as well as could potentially be your career down the line. So tweet your pictures at me when you're done, check it out, and I'll have the next one of these for you shortly. Let me know your thoughts.